it's a shame. It's tragic, really, that we're living in a fear-based um, society right now. But when you can't even go to someone's door and ring a doorbell, um, maybe you're at the wrong house and you can't do that anymore because someone might shoot you. Um, if you're a person of color or a trans person, um, being stopped by the cops is a death sentence, could be a death sentence. And all of these things that, that you have to think about living in this society, we're really just a fear-based society. And it's important to call that out. I remember the civil guard, the New Mexico civil guard. And I, you know, when I read that, it made me sick to my stomach because they won this award, um, $300,000 from the city of Albuquerque because they were detained, right? They weren't hurt. They weren't beaten within an inch of their life. They weren't murdered. They were detained because one of our comrades had been shot multiple times. And the city of Albuquerque just put $300,000 in the hands of a group of white supremacists, which creates more of an atmosphere of fear for those of us who, maybe not right now, but have been out on the streets and been threatened by the arrival or the threat of, of these militia groups showing up. I remember that summer of 2020 being really afraid in my own hometown um, when we were not even protesting, having a rally and being afraid that they were going to show up. And I was invited to speak on stage and I was afraid. I have never been afraid in my own hometown, but we just put $300,000 in the hands of these people that created that fear the APD was referring to them as the armed friendlies in the summer of 2020. And so they were working hand in hand to suppress and to terrorize um, folks who were engaged in street actions um, in solidarity with Black Lives Matter that summer. And so I guess it's not surprising, but it is, there's such like a chronic lack of justice, right? We also say when we're in the streets, no justice, no peace. And we really mean it when we say it, but now... I would be lying if I said I was not afraid <laughs> to go and do protests anymore. I would be lying if I said I was not afraid to be recognized publicly in a place anymore because of what happened to me specifically in 2020. And, you know, Ramona, actually Ramona Emerson, who we interviewed, we were talking about this, that in those spaces, in those border towns, if you do media work, if you are vocal in the media, if you are a recognizable voice who speaks the truth about these things, like, like Ramona does because she's behind the camera and she produces documentaries, or like I was doing that summer, or like you were doing, Elena, like you've done so many times publicly in Olga Polge speaking up on behalf of indigenous liberation and, you know, just liberation in general, that you are a target, you are marked, right? And then in this climate for militias to be emboldened and then they're emboldened again by something like a $300,000 paycheck, basically a reward, you know, for impunity. Um, you know, our comrade Justine told me when the Red Nation held a very small, like not militant, it was just a solidarity action for her on Leonard Peltier Day in February. So just a couple of months ago outside of the federal courthouse in a downtown Albuquerque, that those the New Mexico Civil Guard drove by at least once, possibly twice. And we know because there's a van that they drive around that's very recognizable um, because we had had a lot of experience with them trolling us um, and surveilling us in 2020. And so the Red Nation has a target on its back from these people, from the cops, from the APD, um, and from this white militia, this white supremacist militia that now has 300,000 extra dollars to do, to do the work of settler colonialism and, and terrorism, you know, against indigenous people. And it is terrorism. 
it, it, it is terrorism because I remember distinctly the the weekend that um, they published your address and and invited all of the fash in Albuquerque to basically attack your home. And in that position, you can't call the cops because the cops are partnered with the, the civil guard. So who, and I remember having multiple conversations about this, who came to your defense? It was indigenous women. And the, the, just the memory of that kind of makes me smile a, because nothing happened to you. That was bad, but because the women who showed up with lawn chairs to sit in front of your house and just say, we're not going to let anything happen to you. And it just goes back to show, you know, that, that we as indigenous people, as um, all of our relatives, our black relatives, our trans relatives, like we're the only ones who are going to defend each other because there's no one else. So calling that out and saying we stand and we stand up and we stand strong for these relatives, it can't be said enough and it needs to be constantly repeated because there's no one else to stand up. Even though we are also in a very precarious position and even though we don't feel safe standing up, it's, the, it's mostly like, it's like the indigenous women of the Red Nation who do this a lot. And it is not, it is not safe. It is not comfortable. Ramona Emerson, in fact, the, the fame, the now famous author of Shudder was one of those women who came to my home that day to protect me. So, and that's why she was talking about how dangerous it is to be a visible, outspoken, um, indigenous woman who won't back down from what is right. It's just right. It's right to treat people with dignity. It's the right thing to do, um, to not discriminate <laughs> against folks, to honor them and to respect them um, and to treat them like relatives. It's the right thing to do. And right now it's a very dangerous thing to do. And so I guess, I, I feel like I'm like personally at a crossroads with my politics, trying to think about maintaining the strength and the conviction of that and saying like, yes, we are here for you to support you, even though it's scary. <laughs> and I, I think we need to be honest about how dangerous it is to even say those things right now, let alone put them into practice. Folks, this is what fascism looks like. And it if you ever wondered how people felt in Nazi Germany, um, trying to support people who were being targeted, this is how it feels. And just people who are those, who have those identities, who embody the identities or danger, revolutionaries, you know, activists are in danger, intellectuals who do this work are in danger, like, um, yeah. And that's what's happening right now in the US. So I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs>